All right. So the recording has started. Welcome everyone to the February 9th, 2022 Loopback Maintainers Call. We have quite a full house today, so thank you so much for uh, taking the time to attend. It seems like this new schedule on Wednesday definitely seems to be able to fit better into everyone's schedule. So that's great. And hopefully we can continue with this momentum going forward. So uh, perhaps we can start off uh, the, me the meeting with on the more uh, recurring and more obvious things in the across the past few meetings is uh, the status on the OpenJS Foundation. How's it been going? We finally get the, the transfer code uh, for the domain name. And uh, I, I, I asked for any update for on the OpenJS side, I think last week, um, Brian said he's going to take a look at it again. Um, so I haven't got in touch with him um, since last week, so probably I can send another message to to give him a nudge. Um, yeah, so that's what where we are at. And I created uh, an issue uh, in the governance repo um, on the on the progress because in for the issue that's originally coming from the OpenJS repo, I cannot edit, I cannot do anything. So so I create a new one, which is a copy, and then um, add in like what is the current status and what is um, uh, what is completed and what is not. Right. Yeah, I, I saw those issues on the, uh, uh, I think it was on the governance uh, repo. So I, I guess because we have already initiated a domain transfer, that means that all the legal stuff has already been handled, which, is, which was the main hurdle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we need to get, see, how, how to, yeah, we'll wait for the OpenJS Foundation to um, have it, have the domain mm -hmm. transfer so that they can, they can create the, the email address for us. All right, that's great. So hopefully from, from here on out, it should be much more smooth sailing and we can uh, start to wrap up the, uh, the transition over. Then we can start to focus uh, on other stuff. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So, so I guess yeah. So, uh, we need to get the email address first, and then so that we can. There are a lot of things that just depend on that. So yeah, <laughs> after, that we should be, after that we should be good <laughs> because those are under our control, right? Just for the rest. Yeah. So hopefully the domino effect, you can already start moving forward with that. Uh, once you get the emails, they can mass update all of the reports with the uh, code of uh, code of conduct and contributor covenant and whatnot, and then get the security stuff up as well. So, so that'd be great. Uh, so maybe I can pass it around uh, if there's anything that anyone wants to bring up specifically. I, I think we are all trying to catch up after December. <laughs> December has been very, man. <laughs> can you imagine how Raymond was busy? We were busy. Someone uh, had the COVID. I, I, I just hear the uh, the other guy is saying that he had COVID out, so he's a maintainer, right? And and so I think that we're just trying to catch up. I haven't been able to even monitor the PRs and all that, but we're just trying to catch up uh, this week. Mm, okay, so what what, uh, what will be the the priorities, for example, uh, to focus on on a specific things? What do you recommend, Uh That's that's a good question. Uh, so, I mean, focus, I think, uh, for, for that, right, I think we need a general consensus on what we want to focus on, not just maybe one person pulls left, the other one pulls right, the other one pulls south, and the other pulls east. Um, Correct. Yeah, I mean, for my end, my focus is actually more on uh, improving um, loopbacks integration with um, security management, security-related products, and uh, also generally to improve the way that we can uh, manage loopback based projects uh, in a secure manner. So that includes things like managing vulnerabilities and uh, making sure things are up to date. So um, that's, but that, I think for that one, it's more of like a personal individual contribution that I'm pushing forward, uh, not so much of a general sense of what uh, loopback should be focusing on as, as a whole. So uh, as a whole, I think there's a lot of things that we, yeah, <laughs> we could be focusing on. Uh, Maybe one of the things that's actually quite uh, heavy um, that's I, I, I do know it takes quite a while is the modernize is the um, updating of the type definitions for the connectors and especially for the juggler. 
I think I brought this up a, a while back, right? That I have started, I've like essentially dumped a lot of new type definitions for juggler, and I would actually like get some people to take a look at it. So I'm wondering if any of the any of you uh, who may have more experience in like juggler to be able to take a look at it uh, at the pull request and see if there's any issues that you can find. So perhaps maybe at the Raymond, Diana, or yeah, but I know. You, you all have been on loop back longer than, than I have. Um, so maybe you, you could, I could get your, your all input on, on that PR. Yeah, sure. Uh, is, is it uh, open? I, uh, it's currently in draft mode, so I can just share my screen. I also share the link as well. Uh, okay. So yeah, so this, uh, do I move this? Yeah. So. This would be the PR where I essentially added all the different type definitions. Yeah, so so this one I essentially just uh, scan through the the, uh, the juggler um, source code and I try to essentially uh, piece together what are the different type definitions that are missing. So um, I'm not sure if it's exactly correct. So I would like to get people who have actually used it in practice to take a look at it as well. So for this one, I'll share it inside the chat. Uh, how do I bring back my chat? Okay, so I'm gonna share the link right here. Yeah, so that will be the link to the uh, to that uh, pull request. So, and uh, another thing that uh, that is open right now, uh, this one is this one is just like a minimum minimum effort PR. It's just uh, to see to gauge if this is something that we want to implement as well. This one uh, is related to security. So, this pull request is also on the Loopback IO website. Uh, so, <coughs> essentially, we can, uh, with this PR, what we are implementing is the CSAF. 2.0 document. So CSAF 2.0 is uh, essentially the common security advisory framework. And what it allows us to do is essentially you write our like CVEs and other security advisories in a format that can be digested by uh, other tools. So I think this can be actually quite helpful because like, for example, uh, at my company, we can ingest these, um, we can ingest uh, these files. Right, and then we can actually figure out. Oh, these versions of loopback are actually vulnerable to this, um, to this like prototype pollution attack or whatnot. And then from there, we can more easily keep track of like which applications we need to update and whatnot. So this one, I've only uh, only converted one of the uh, security advisory so far, which is the latest one. But uh, I would like to get everyone else's input on it so that uh, if this is something we want to move forward with, we can. Uh, convert all of our existing security advisories to uh, this format as well. So, um, yeah, is there any, any input from anyone uh, who would like to maybe have another alternate idea or opinions? Oops. A couple comments here. First of all, uh, I think the healthy situation, like each of us will drive the for the development of Slowback based upon uh, the the primary use cases we have, uh, because uh, to me, the the core Slowback itself is a premature framework, and uh, uh, over time, like I think the users will decide what features will be used most, um, and I think the 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 most significant value of Slowback is we have this uh, core framework that really, uh, you know. Uh, implement the, the best practice patterns to create a, like a larger scale and a composable and extensible uh, type square applications. So I think there's a huge demand to have this kind of framework to really uh, educate uh, users like say, hey, uh, if you go beyond just a few NPM modules for your application, what are the things you have to pay attention to and what are the design patterns you have to use to really make a 
uh, possible uh, to create a sustainable project uh, that involves many different teams and they involve many different modules. So I saw an interesting uh, Twitter thread um, uh, people kind of talking about if they like a uh, like a next yes or not. Uh, I like the the reaction was kind of like uh, uh, going going to two directions. On one hand, a lot of like a uh, uh, JavaScript developers say, "Hey, that's too heavy. That's just a, a clone of Java or, or Spring." But on the other hand, I also saw like some good reactions say, hey, if you want to build a complex large scale application, so you need to have these kinds of things. So I, I, I can sort of sense that, like if you just a, a, a JavaScript developer from the front end and you just want to use a, a couple of NPM modules, then they feel the learning curve, uh, all the things around this, uh, you know, I mean, first of all, they probably started to push back on type square. <laughs> That's the uh, first push, but now type square really becomes the mainstream to me. Um, like in the, at, at least in my space, I pretty much check out all the different, you know, uh, like a JavaScript square SDKs. I think most of them are already in type square completely. Uh, and the, people are building a lot of infrastructure in type square. So, uh, I think that's probably well adopted at this point then. Going to the next level is sure at the language level, we, uh, the, the developers are obligated to add more knowledge to the code itself by defining the types and uh, defining the signatures uh, and putting them into a good structure. Uh, and when it comes to like, how the modules working together nicely, right? so uh, of course people will say, hey, I can just do a simple require uh, and then you kind of manually get them composed together, but I don't think they always think about uh, that's not always feasible in you know, a very complex application because there's so many moving pieces and you want to have the decoupling between the common behavior and the, some of the specific implementations that provides addition um, capability to that common behavior. Okay. So there, there's going to be a, a pretty uh, steep learning curve, uh, and uh, people are kind of pushing back on that. But I, I think the Nubank itself is in a very good position to be the proponent to build this foundational, um, you know, uh, for for type square developers. But uh, that, that that's one part of the thing. The second part of the thing is, uh, uh, I would imagine, even though at the beginning, Lubeck was uh, pretty uh, like uh, standing out from the uh, OIM perspective, because we sort of have a, a reasonable like a DSL in the MongoDB kind of request response style, talking to different kind of databases. But over time, like the, the caveat of OIM is showing up, like because when people talk to databases, it's not just the the typical crawl itself, right? So they always want to have more advanced features beyond that. And maintaining so many database connections is becoming kind of a burden to the team. Uh, so, and, and uh, that's why at we, even we had an ambition at the beginning, like say we, we try to evolve the, the juggler framework and rewrite that in TypeScript, but we just didn't have that bandwidth and enough motivation to do so. So that could be a sign like uh, we have further diversify or enable uh, Lubeck to engage with different type of uh, uh, database connectivities. For example, we already showcase how to use uh, type OIM, and we also have a code that illustrate how to interact with uh, Prisma or even just uh, use uh, any third party framework or the database driver directly. Uh, so combining that addition uh, like uh, features uh, together with the common like a uh, abstraction around the uh, uh, crawl operations, uh, I think uh, we're kind of reasonable there. It's not outstanding, but it's reasonable. So personally, I probably will see how the community react on that. And uh, uh, I mean, I, I personally want to contribute much more into that space, I would say. Uh, so I think Lubeck has enough uh, extensibility to allow us to use any database systems in a, uh, whatever way the developer want to use it. Uh, and for my application, I pretty much like I built the repositories for DynamoDB from ground up. Uh, but 
uh, I have to sacrifice the uh, abstraction around the, the crawl operations because dynamic BB is very different and the kind of forcing that kind of mapping, it's not very efficient. Uh, and, and also for the security side, I think that's critical because uh, uh, Lubeck is a mature and a well adopted project, so we have to keep up with all the security things. And uh, I, I really like uh, Reefers push to standardize the security best practices and to make that kind of transparency. Uh, so uh, I think on the OpenJS Foundation, that could be one of the goals. Uh, uh, not say we have to uh, develop a lot of new features for Lubeck, but make a look back a well-maintained project i think that's kind of the first priority um, from both like a legal security and uh, the the uh, dependency uh, and the, the critical like a feature perspective uh, uh, to me that's probably the the primary uh, uh, expectation i would have yeah so i said yeah. a, a lot yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah I, I... But I, I do agree with the uh, point you said about Loopback being generally well architected, that it can be considered a mature framework. And I guess in a way, the fact that we're able to do this kind of like percussive maintenance instead of constantly uh, having a lot of packing new features and whatnot kind of proves that this modular stacked approach is flexible enough to cater to everyone's need, right? The framework doesn't block the developers from doing a specific thing because we expose as much of the API as possible. Um, I, I guess uh, going to your point about uh, we each work on what uh, our own requirements, you know, you know, I actually genuinely agree with that because like we are not like under the same employment, we don't necessarily have the same goals. And if we can contribute where we can, then optimistically we should just contribute those features so that other people can benefit as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering for certain things where we want input from uh, from each other, right? For example, with the juggler, I, I may not be so familiar with this code base and I'd like to get other people's input on it as well. I think for those things, um, we should uh, at least uh, get, get uh, some kind of review from each other, right? For those cases. Yeah, yeah. Mario, I think you are mute. Rifa is muting you. <laughs> uh, am I muting? <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing it on purpose. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> no, you see, I, I think, I think, I think, for example, the younger system, uh, I think uh, the approach that, that Rifa is taking for making a stronger type is, is fine, but in the, in the mid-term and long-term, um, it would be nice to refactor uh, the yoga, the yoga bridge and, and the concept to bring it in, in, in a different approach, right? TypeScript wise, or, or the same thing that we talked before, right? That uh, you can actually uh, moderate ar around the extension point extension uh, pattern, for example, that would be great. You know, the, the look back framework, I love the framework, it, you know, that's why I'm here just trying to help even, you know, with my limited knowledge on specific things, but we have uh, uh, recently we we actually created a middleware uh, for um, major wire transfer company. I cannot say the name. <laughs> I, I signed an NDA, but you know the integration was very fantastic. And so the bank wanted to integrate in the mobile app this wire transfer mechanism, uh, and it took around six months for the wire transfer company to approve officially. And, and 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 they they had soap services and but they moved to uh, rest services and then we integrated directly with the rest services uh, but imagine initially they gave us the documentation for the soap services everything was soap mm -hmm. and we started working with that right and in a meeting i saw the documentation say hey do you guys have a, a swagger uh, yes why we don't use it you never asked you said that you, can you imagine that and we start working integrated with the soap and look back uh, nicely uh, the the move from soap to rest in the you know we 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 were having like a three weeks of development and it was fantastic the moving it's playing nicely uh, we integrated a wallet you know with uh, I can say that name is Wallet Factory for example it's it's a product right there. Um, 
and uh, they don't have kind of like a, a good documentation, but uh, the integration was fine. You know, the what I learned from these two projects is that uh, they they had a different ways of uh, securing the API request, for example. And, and uh, for example, the, the factory, the wallet actually uh, wanted to send the middleware, right? The, the loopback middleware wanted to send, for example, the request encrypted using HMAC, for example, and if requests, they, they provided the key and, and so on. Uh, the other integration we had to, uh, to actually start up a service, get a token and refresh it a specific every three minutes or something like that. And we're talking about contain, containerized uh, uh, loopback that actually have three, four instances, for example, and they're playing nice. I mean, so far, the my use case for the jeweler is more or less to retrieve uh, information from the catalog systems and more or less, right? So that whenever we start up, if this is a catalog system, we start up, we just grab the information and probably uh, store it in the memory uh, as opposed to reading uh, the database servers. But it's playing nicely. My, my, my point is that if these companies have certified Lubac middlewares, uh, it means that we did a good job and Lubac is doing a good job, right? So I think that we don't, uh, we, I, I can see uh, progress only uh, on the, on, on reinforce, reinforcing the jobler system, right? By following what Rifa said, type strong, but in the middle term, refactoring it, right? Probably uh, we can get more resources and, and, and to do that, that would be great. That, that would be great. Also, we had uh, one, one, one integrations with the type ORM, a very small application, and it's working fine also. Right. So I'm very happy with the framework, and is uh, the, the the response is is very great. And we we have a customer um, that also, for example, has electronic invoicing systems. Uh, the middleware is, is written in. You can you imagine, for example, they are very happy because uh, they put it this on 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 Amazon. Uh, Fargate is managing the microservices. We have uh, six containers and up to 200,000 users. Uh, the loopback uh, microservice has been running in one container, <laughs> right? Only one container is very, very stable. It has been one year and the service has not even restarted. Can you imagine that? Right? They are very happy. Mm -hmm. cool. it, it, it's always great to hear the success stories uh, of loopback, right? Because uh, unlike other frameworks, uh, Loopback 4 is typically with the success stories, it's contained within the companies. You don't hear it publicly announced on Medium or any blog post. So really appreciate that, Mario, because um, yeah. it's quite... Yeah, yeah. I, I think that positioning is kind of interesting because um, if you want to fully unleash the power of Loopback, then you have to do some investment. And hopefully that investment is... Uh, uh, very rewarding in the longer term. So you kind of pay the tuition ahead of time. So not everybody can afford paying that tuition or they are not fully uh, motivated to pay that tuition. But uh, like when your application itself is kind of uh, big enough and also involves a lot of moving parts and the third party integrations, then you realize you, need, you have this kind of calibers to um, piece them together and keep that a very decoupled system. So you don't really constrain how people are doing things. Um, going back uh, like an E and R, right? Uh, so of course, like for example, we don't have a very good, you know, inbound WebSocket support, but it does not prevent any people to using WebSocket to integrate that uh, uh, new back itself. And uh, we only have a kind of limit uh, GraphQL support, but uh, it's not very difficult to at all, another graphical backend to leverage our system. Uh, so I think that decoupling and all the the, the few like uh, powerful patterns that we make that first class citizen of Lubeck really make a difference. Um, to me, like uh, we can even have the possibility just to spin off the the core uh, framework as a very powerful like uh, application foundational framework. Uh, uh, but, uh, otherwise, like people will kind of like uh, uh, think look back at the all-in-one thing, uh, so they don't understand they can actually 
uh, cherry pick the, the meaningful things they can use in any context of the application. I saw some users ask uh, Rifa the other day, like, can I use feedback in the browser environment? Okay, so we, we have done that work in the past, but people probably are not really aware of that. So uh, I think more like focusing on the uh, education and the kind of like a, uh, creating tutorials, stuff like that. We, we don't that necessarily need to build a lot of uh, advanced features per se, but really make the core itself very robust and very flexible and easy to use. I think that's uh, 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 a little bit longer term goal, at least for myself. And it just uh, try to uh, provide a, a little more like uh, uh, context. Uh, imagine I have built this uh, over 50 modules uh, backend that involves uh, transactional behaviors, uh, just like uh, uh, Mario was uh, talking about. Right? Um, and also we care about the user uh, privacy and the kind of like a security very much. So every single day we're seeing attacks. Uh, the moment we, we deploy our API to AWS, uh, then you look at the monitoring, you see uh, all the hackers are trying different uh, vulnerabilities, uh, known vulnerabilities uh, from different systems. That so assume it's a PHP system and maybe there's a, like a backdoor they can use. So they're just sending all this traffic to our API server, right? So, uh, so that's one hand. The other hand is uh, we support so many uh, tokenized communities on Discord, on Telegram, and we have to integrate with the we have uh, backend as well, uh, bots and the webhook calls uh, and all the security protocols uh, happening between the two. Uh, then, like in our case, we uh, enable so many members of each of the Discord communities. So like we already have like a 15,000 tokenized community and each community can go beyond like, a, you know, thousands of uh, members, right? So we, we have to make that skill uh, working. So we're kind of a little bit like in the consumer facing application, I would say. But imagine like a, a, when I built that thing within like a six months to one year time frame uh, with, with all, a lot of other developers, uh, then uh, also look at how many PRs I kind of push back to do back. Uh, it, it's fascinating. I, I didn't have to create a lot of PRs to do back uh, to be successful. Uh, of course, I did cover a few like corner cases, uh, but uh, nothing like a ma major. Right? So I think if we can support our use cases uh, in this kind of sustainable uh, manner, meaning we don't really have to be full time on loop back, but we kind of drive loop back forward from whatever context we're in, uh, and uh, hopefully that will be equally useful to other community members. And uh, like speaking for myself, like uh, we also have the ambition to open source our stack as well. So at that point in time, then we probably can have more possibility to push some of the um, like uh, utility modules back to loop back. Uh, uh, for example, like we build like a job queues around Redis, uh, and uh, we building cache around Redis stuff. Uh, so these features uh, could be useful to the to the community as well. And uh, uh, we also treat that as just kind of extension to Loopback. Uh, it won't add any burden to whoever wants to uh, adopt Loopback because we don't want to be forced to uh, choose all the modules we ship in under the umbrella. Right, so I think that point has to be made very clear. Yeah, I think uh, loopback is in a bit of a, a slightly awkward position because it's in the Node.js ecosystem where you want something quick and easy, but at the same time, it's trying to compete with the likes of a Java and their Spring Boot and whatnot. <laughs> so, but yes, you you I I think it, we we generally see that right, and in fact, I think that time when uh, some of us uh, presented to um, uh, that internal presentation with, uh, uh, I think it was the insurance company, they were using Loopback 4 as well, right? So I think uh, th these are testaments of, of cases where Loopback 4 has actually proven to be useful in a more mature teams or larger teams where the people are more familiar with the concept that Loopback 4 introduces, right? So that it isn't as uh, difficult uh, uh, for them to start working with it. Uh, so uh, I, I guess uh, going back to the point about the juggler, right? So I agree, like long term, mid term, we want to refactor it so that there isn't so much of these features that 
while it may have made sense back then when Java, uh, when Node.js was new, nowadays it's a paradigm that doesn't make sense nowadays. Uh, but I, I think one of the first things we need to do, right, before we refactor Juggler is that we need to understand <laughs> what features Juggler have in the first place. So uh, I think the type definitions would play a really big part, and I think it's, it is actually blocking uh, the progression of Juggler in this case. So uh, I hope that maybe some, by sometime by like the next month or two or so, we will be able to get like a complete type definition but for Juggler and for our connectors. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, so I think the challenge for Juggler is uh, missing the, the contracts, right? So defining the subspread definition for that will help all the community members to understand that. And if they're motivated to improve that, um, they should have the ability to do so. So Juggler is kind of a little bit like the extension point for all the database accesses that uh, it expose the capability to enable extensions in the form of a connectors, uh, but really to make them first class citizen of Loopback 4, uh, we need to do some surgery work uh, to clean up the the, the contracts in terms of like uh, different typing and the different interfaces so that people are clear what things they have to support and uh, what things are optional and uh, basically make the, the the learning curve lower to create any new connectors if people are motivated to do so for these uh, uh, common uh, crawl operations uh, yeah I, I, I would agree with Sarifa in that perspective yeah, so I think one of the main difficulties with Juggler is that there's a lot of uh, JavaScript object permutations that happen. So it does get a bit, a bit funky. Like the, when you start, a, when you initialize a connector, the Juggler adds some properties, it modifies certain things. So it, 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 yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of uh, edge cases from the back in the days of uh, older JavaScript. Uh, so it would be really great uh, if all of you can look at it Put your comments as well. It's like, oh, uh, this isn't how it's supposed to work, or this one that's actually a, a permutation here, or this one we can split it into two types or something like that, uh, so that we can move that forward. All right. So, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Yes, yeah. Diana. Uh, so, in like, I think um, Mara and Raymond just mentioned that's like the the sort of the success story of Loopback and how they're using Loopback and for the um for, for the project so i'm wondering like would it make like or is it okay to um to have a blog post kind of like to sort of tell people that okay this is there are actually people using it and this is how we like in a very high level using it and um yeah. okay and and that brings to the Next question is, I think we talked about that uh, Rifa, last time is about the blog post. Um, so we have the strong .com and I think at some point we want to um, sort of copy over whatever we have over there to Loopback IO or some other places. I think um, going back to the Loopback IO is the preferred choice um, that um, we discussed. Yeah, I, I think from like an just from an SEO perspective and and whatnot, it's actually uh, favorable to just put it on the Lubeck IO than to like uh, put it on Medium.com because uh, that way it's more accessible and it also helps uh, push um, the website up a bit because it will have uh, more content attached to it. Uh, so I, I've not actually made uh, too much headway with like figuring out how Jekyll's blog post system works, but uh, from what I found, it is a built-in feature. So hopefully that should be relatively straightforward. So for that, uh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of debating between myself. So like uh, the, the Jekyll-based system uh, works, but it kind of requires some learning curve to understand how it works uh, if we have to touch some of the stuff. Um, and in, in the new world, like I think frameworks like the Docsaurus, uh, it's a pretty uh, nice uh, documentation and a blogging framework uh, that's easy to learn and has the modern UIs. So maybe at some point we can explore that kind of possibility. Yeah. So I we think... can keep uh, what we have today with uh, Lubeck IO, and then we have uh, 
kind of like a subdomain or whatever, like a blog that do back that, oh, we can utilize uh, dark storage or, or some other, uh, like this uh, so-called like a gem stack, uh, it's a jaw square uh, kind of stack, uh, which kind of doing a static content generation uh, upfront from the web UI. Yeah, I, I think- I think... I'm looking at the Dark Service right now. So, so are we? So, if if that's the case, do we need to have the blog content in a separate uh, repo, or we can all do it in the same repo? I'm not very familiar with the how uh, we can so configure it. So, I think uh, it's very much just, uh, Markdown files. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, DocSource is similar to Jekyll in the sense that it has, uh, it's, uh, the difference is that Jack, uh, DocSource is built for documentation, but also has a blog post feature. Jekyll is, yeah. is website plus a blog post feature as well. So yeah. they, they both have uh, blogging features built in uh, with like markdown files. Yeah. And the Jekyll, the issue is uh, because it's a uh, Ruby based, so we are working on like a jaw square type square, uh, like every single day. So have a, a framework that native to, to jaw square probably it's a, a plus for us. Yeah. Well, I, I have been, I have slowly started learning Jekyll as I was trying to, uh, <laughs> like IO repo. <laughs> um, I, I think generally it's okay. It, it gets the job done <laughs> for the most part. Just that, yeah, because uh, I don't, we don't touch Ruby that much, so it can be a bit of a learning yeah. curve. But of course, migrating to select DocSaurus is also another effort in itself. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps like for the short term, medium term, then uh, what we have now should be fine, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you, can you share the, the links for the, the 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 CMS packages that you were talking about? Uh, yeah. Uh, DocSaurus, I think it's a Facebook uh, project. So I'm going to share yeah. the link here. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's built on top of React.js, right? So um, so all the JSX. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's used by quite a few. Um, Open source projects already, so Superbase and whatnot. They they use DocSaurus. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, anything else? So maybe kind of echoing uh, the proposal that. Uh, Diana has like maybe we can have a, a, a joint blog kind of each of us uh, contribute one graph, uh, sorry, one paragraph talking about how we um, use uh, loopback in our day job and kind of just give a, a little bit like a uh, flavor of uh, like how we, you know, empower our applications with loopback and what are the path we 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 like the most and uh, what areas we would like to see uh like a future development oh yeah yeah maybe a google docs would be fine or would you prefer we just uh open uh issue on like uh, loopback io and then we just type our paragraphs in Start with a Google Doc, like each of us, like say, uh, you, me, Rifa, and Diana, each of us, uh, you know, provide one simple program, and then we, we collectively uh, transform that into a markdown form. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking whether we want to do like sort of a, a maintainer series, that kind of thing that like, like introduce ourselves, like each of the maintainer has their, like when we get to a block, right? And so like each one will have a, a like a, a block, like it will be a blog post series about like maintainer and then what would, do we do in a day job and then that we can do, or, or what, what Raymond said, like focus on the, what is the success story that we're doing for, for the like Kind of like a look back inspirationals, right? <laughs> 
I, I suppose uh, in a way, Diana, your idea, right? It does kind of like have that more human touch to it because it's like each mm -hmm. of us individually, our own success stories. Uh, I, I don't know if we have uh, enough paragraphs to write for each and every one of us, <laughs> uh, but I guess it's something we can try as well, right? Like maybe we all think a bit, write some drafts and then see, can we fill up one entire post for ourselves? And then if not, then we just... Uh, yes? I remember, I remember uh, Node.js has something like that a long time ago, some time ago. Um, I can try to see what they have too. Okay, uh, that would be great. Uh, so, so maybe you can take some inspirations from them to see what uh, kind of focus points that they have. Uh, so for the so for that, of course, we'll need the blog thing up. Maybe uh, I'll check it sometime in the next two weeks. I uh, try to play around with Jekyll, uh, figure out if I can set up the blog. Um, from there, oh, uh, Diana, I'm, I'm curious uh, from, from your end, because uh, I think I brought it up last time uh, with, because uh, I do have an outstanding PR for uh, the API Connect improvement. Uh, were, you, were you able to review it? Uh, no, I, I need to, I still need to take a look. I still owe that to you. Sorry about that. Uh, no worries. I just wanted to get uh, insider input on it to see if the um, definitions are correct and whatnot. Uh, yeah, and I think also uh, this one is not specifically for loopback, but also it's just mainly it's kind of tied to loop back because the website does reference loop back. It's the strong loop website. Uh, it's, I, I think uh, Diana or Yapa from, from your end, I think there needs to be an update for like what is IBM's current status of supporting loop back uh, on the strong loop website because I think uh, Diana, you brought up it was out of date. Uh, so uh, to minimize confusion, maybe we should either remove it or replace it with, with newer information. Yeah, I, that's one of my to do as well. Okay. So I think uh, there's nothing else from from my end. Yeah, I'm good too. Okay, so it looks like we have come to the end of. Uh, today's monthly maintainers call. So if there's nothing else, uh, just going once, going twice. All right. <laughs> Great. Thank so you for coordinating. Thank you. Thank you, Rifa, for your time and coordinating the meeting. Yeah. Well, no worries. It's always great to <laughs> see you. See you all on the on the meeting once a month. Right. It's great to see everyone's faces. Uh, but most importantly, I think, thank you to all of you for like coming onto the call. I know you, all of you are very busy. I'm sure more busy than I am, uh, on, on, on the day stuff. So thank you so much for coming to this call. Really appreciate it. And I really do hope that we can all uh, come back again for next month's maintainers call. Thank you, Riva. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye